asesinada la youtuber Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro, conocida como Nana Pelucas. Anoche dos hombres le dispararon en su restaurante en el fraccionamiento. Con... February 5th, 2018. Leslie Ann Pamela Montenegro, a talented YouTuber, was enjoying dinner with her husband when two armed men walked in. They would order two beers before opening fire at Leslie, shooting her three times in the head. These are five YouTubers who were brutally killed by Mexican cartels. Number 5. El Compa Jorge April 18, 2022. Mexican YouTuber Jorge Luis, better known as El Compa Jorge, was gunned down outside his home in the Guadalupe Victoria neighborhood in Cuyacan, Sinaloa. That day, El Compa had plans to visit his bank, and he excitedly shared this news with his Instagram followers, numbering around 30,000. Hey there, my people. Hope you're all having a fantastic start to the week. We're done with the holidays and back in action. I'm heading to the bank to see how long the line is. Sending blessings to all. Have a great day. Approximately 45 minutes later, at 1.45 p.m., a group of gunmen unleashed a hail of bullets on El Compa Jorge outside his home. Eyewitnesses reported that the armed men arrived at the scene in a brand new gray SUV Toyota. They intercepted the content creator and fired more than 10 shots at him. After the attack, the assailants fled in the same vehicle. Emergency personnel rushed to the site to provide medical assistance to Jorge, who had sustained multiple gunshot wounds. Despite the efforts of the medical team, the 35-year-old tragically succumbed to his injuries while being transported in the ambulance to the hospital. Doctors later confirmed his death. And the question remains, why would someone target El Compa Jorge, a harmless YouTuber? When Jorge first started his YouTube channel, he posted simple vlogs and story time videos. Eventually, he found his niche and began creating content focused on expensive cars and his personal UTV collection. However, living a flashy lifestyle with fancy cars can attract all kinds of attention, including the wrong kind. And well, everyone knows that cartels are not only known for silencing the media, but also for engaging in kidnapping and extortion. And that's exactly what happened with El Compa Jorge. 2021, Jorge would share a truly terrifying experience on his channel, in which he recounted being kidnapped by members of a cartel that he didn't name. He said that this traumatic event had a profound impact on his mental health, leaving him scared to even step outside for several months. Even something as simple as stopping at a red light made him incredibly anxious. In the video, he also revisited the place where he was kidnapped, despite feeling uneasy about it. But how exactly did the kidnapping go down? According to Jorge, one evening he'd been out with a friend when things took an unexpected turn. His friend asked him to give a ride home to some mutual acquaintances, and being the friendly person he was, he agreed without hesitation. However, as he drove, he started feeling increasingly uneasy. The drinks he had earlier on began to take their toll, and he urgently needed to vomit and use the restroom. Unable to wait any longer, he pulled over and stepped out of the car to attend to his bodily needs. However, in a crazy turn of events, as Jorge stood there vulnerable, another vehicle came rolling up toward him. Then a man stepped out of the car with a rifle, and before Jorge even could process what was going on, the man snatched both of his phones right out of his hands. But that wasn't the worst part, he would forcefully drag Jorge into the car, where a few other men were waiting for him. The men then tied his hands, blindfolded him, and started questioning him, demanding to know where his money came from. Jorge then told him that he owned a little tortilla shop, which was true. But the men couldn't believe that this seemingly ordinary business owner could afford to drive such an expensive car. Their suspicion grew, and they accused him of being involved with one of their rival cartels. Jorge vehemently denied any connection to any cartel, fully aware that his life was hanging by a thread. But his captors weren't buying it and continued to threaten him, and would even assault him physically. They would take turns smacking his head with a gun barrel, or taunt him by playing with a safety switch making it crystal clear they had the power to end his life in an instant. Seeing no way out of this, Jorge decided to make one last desperate plea to his captors. He begged them if they were going to kill him to at least leave his body in a place where his family could find him. To his shock, this plea seemed to strike a chord with the kidnappers. Perhaps they may have felt a trace of empathy or even realized Jorge truly had nothing to do with cartels. Whatever the reason, they decided to set him free. Despite the horrifying experience he endured, this wasn't the last time El Compa Jorge mentioned the cartels in his YouTube channel. 
In this other video, he claimed to have met and talked with one of El Chapo's sons. Later on after Jorge was killed, rumors began to circulate that this particular video had caught the attention of the Sinaloa cartel's rivals. It seemed they believed Jorge had a connection to El Chapitos, leading them to target him. Many people also questioned why he stayed in the same state or even country after his terrifying encounter with kidnappers, arguing that it was a terrible idea to return to the crime scene and even shoot a video there. And maybe they have a point. In Mexico, kidnapped victims rarely escape unharmed, even if they make it out alive. Number 4. Super Chinello August 31st, 2022, Mexican YouTuber Ruben Ortega, also known as Super Chinello, arrived home with his wife and four-year-old son. Little did he know that tragedy was about to strike. As he stepped out of the vehicle to open his gate, a group of armed assailants who had been waiting ambushed him. Without any warning, the attackers unleashed a hail of bullets at point-blank range, ending his life and leaving his wife seriously injured. Thankfully, their son escaped physical harm. But this innocent boy had to witness the heart-wrenching murder of his father before his eyes, leaving him traumatized forever. The neighbors, alarmed by the sound of gunshots, immediately dialed 911 and rushed to the scene. However, their efforts were in vain as they found the famous YouTuber lying lifeless on the ground. The heartbreaking news of Super Chinello's murder was shared on his official Facebook page, accompanied by the following message. Unfortunately, everything is true. Our friend and colleague, Ruben Ortega, passed away. Thank you for showing your support. Before his untimely demise, Super Chinello was passionate about showcasing an important aspect of Mexican culture. In fact, he adopted his stage name due to his love for the traditional Mexican dance that originated in Tlayacapan, Morelos. On his channel, Ortega would often live stream local events and festivities, donning his signature red mask. Through these endeavors, he became a beloved figure in his community. Sadly, Ortega's killers haven't been found to this day, as the perps fled the scene, leaving behind nothing that could lead to their identities and whereabouts. However, some speculate that Ortega's fearless criticism of corrupt Mexican political organizations and even drug cartels on social media may have played a role in the events that led to his tragic fate. This is highly likely to be true, especially considering the crime took place during a surge of violence caused by drug cartels in the country. The incident had left people shocked, as they highly respected the late YouTuber. Plus, the brutal nature of the crime only intensified their anger toward the ongoing violence of the cartels and the perceived lack of effort by the government to put an end to it. Number 3. Juan Luis Lagunas Rosales December 18th, 2017, the famous Mexican YouTuber Juan Luis was having a wild night out with his friends at a local bar. This little night of fun was about to take a tragic turn when a gang of armed men stormed in and mercilessly shot him down. Lagunas, born in Sinaloa, Mexico, had a tough upbringing. Abandoned by his parents as a kid, he was left in the care of his grandmother. At 15, Lagunas left his hometown without completing high school and moved to Culiacan. To make ends meet, he began by washing cars, and it was during this time that he earned the nickname that would later make him famous online, El Pirata de Culiacan or the Pirate of Culiacan. As Lagunas settled into this new life, he began sharing videos on YouTube, showcasing his unique lifestyle. These videos caught the attention of partygoers, and soon enough, he found himself receiving more and more invitations to extravagant events. Lagunas embraced his newfound popularity and didn't shy away from flaunting his wild adventures on social media. His videos in which he was shown chugging several bottles of alcohol quickly went viral. Soon, the young man became a YouTube sensation and started attracting millions on Facebook and Instagram. Lagunas' social media fame brought him all sorts of perks, including appearances in music videos and promotional events. His baby face with wild clownish antics made him a hit with the masses. However, amidst the glitz and glamour, he was an easy target. It was easy to forget that he was still just a boy, trying to find his place in a world that showed no mercy. To make himself look older, this kid decided to draw a beard on his chin and get tattoos on both his arms. He had a pirate on one and a tiger on the other. He would post pics of himself holding big guns, surrounded by attractive women and fancy cars. And even though the legal drinking age in Mexico was 18, Lagunas acted as if there were no rules, thinking he was invincible. But he was soon about to find out that nobody is truly untouchable, especially when you mess with the wrong people. 
Now, one night, during one of his wild parties, dressed in red, Lagunas was feeling particularly proud of his extravagant lifestyle. He acted as if he were the king of the world, and it suddenly occurred to him to create a video where he insulted El Mencho, a name that struck fear into everyone's hearts, including local and federal authorities. El Mencho leads the infamous CJNG, known for its brutal violence and involvement in thousands of murders. Currently, he is the most wanted person in Mexico and one of the most wanted in the US. But in short, he's just someone you don't want to mess with. However, it seemed that Lagunas didn't quite agree with that. But sadly, he didn't have to wait long to realize the dire consequences of those actions. Just a few days after posting that video, a gang of armed men stormed into the bar where he was with his friends partying in Jalisco. They sprayed the place with gunfire, hitting him with no less than 18 shots. The attack left his body in such a terrible state that police could only identify him by his tattoos. But apparently it seemed that this tragedy wasn't enough for people to fully understand the lesson. Unfortunately, the pirate of Kuyakan wasn't the last person to experience the grim fate that awaits those who dare to cross paths with El Mencho firsthand. Number 2. La Cholita in the treacherous world of Mexican organized crime, every move you make could be your last. And this notorious hit woman known as La Cholita was no exception to this brutal reality. This badass lady was actually a member of not one but two of the most dangerous cartels in all of Mexico. La Nueva Familia Michoacana and the Los Viagras Cartel. Yet it was her audacious social media posts and YouTube videos that sealed her fate. Identified as Lucy Cruz in one social media profile and Castillo Hernandez in another, La Cholita took her profiles to share videos and photos where she straight up mocked and taunted the CJNG cartel. She would even have the guts to insult their leader, El Mencho. <laughs> <laughs> November 2020, in one of her final videos, La Cholita called out CJNG members as a bunch of cowards for supposedly ditching a truck loaded with firearms. And let me tell you, that kind of audacity didn't go unnoticed. Now, shortly after that video, the hit woman vanished into thin air. No trace of her, no word from her. She disappeared into the abyss and those who knew her are fearing the worst. Now the big question on their mind is, what truly happened to La Cholita? Did she meet that gruesome end at the hands of the CJNG, just like those who insulted El Mencho before her and never lived to tell the tale? Or is she being held captive somewhere, waiting for her fate to be decided? The sad thing is we may never know, but one thing is for sure, when you mess with El Mencho, you can never expect a happy ending. And number one, Leslie and Pamela Montenegro. February 5th, 2018, tragedy would strike in the beautiful beachside city of Acapulco. Leslie and Pamela Montenegro, a talented journalist, satirist, and social media commentator, also known as Pamica, was brutally shot and killed by two unknown assailants. Now, the horrifying incident occurred at Montenegro's own restaurant sometime between 6 p.m. and 7 p.m. It was a place she co-owned with her husband, a spot where they likely shared many happy memories together. The attackers entered this place with an air of nonchalance, casually ordering beer before making their way toward Montenegro. She was peacefully seated with her husband, unaware of the danger lurking nearby, and without warning, the assailants would fire multiple rounds, targeting Montenegro's face and abdomen before fleeing the scene quickly, leaving behind a mess of chaos and devastation. Now, what could have motivated such a heinous act? Montenegro, at the age of 36, was a vibrant and creative soul. She ran a popular satirical YouTube channel and an online news magazine called El Sillon. However, she was best known as La Nana Pelucas or the Grandma in Wigs. She'd get out there with her big black curly wig, red lipstick, and glasses. Her eccentricity knew no bounds, and she would often visit those local supermarkets, fully embracing the role of Nana Palucas and delighting the community with her presence. It wouldn't take long for her to become a beloved figure, adored by many. Leslie would soon start incorporating the character of Nana Palucas into her political and satirical videos fearlessly criticizing and exposing corrupt government officials in Acapulco. 
However, as you may already know, insulting or annoying politicians or even cartels in Mexico can have deadly consequences. Sadly, in Mexico, freedom of speech and free press are luxuries that most people can only dream of. These fundamental rights are heavily suppressed to prevent certain information from reaching that public. Speaking about such matters can come at the expense of one's life. In fact, since the year 2000, approximately 145 journalists have been brutally killed in Mexico. So before long, Leslie caught the attention of the independent cartel of Acapulco. And that's when things took a turn for the worse. She started receiving terrifying threats and banners accusing her of working against the cartel began appearing near her restaurant. Leslie denied any association with the cartels, emphasizing that the information she shared on her channel was reliable and honest. Unfortunately, her nightmare didn't end there, and this time they accused her of working for the government. December 4th, 2016, Acapulco was plastered with narcomantas which are banners carrying messages attributed to the cartel. And these banners contain threats aimed at several individuals, including Montenegro. The banners mentioned a Facebook page called Denuncias Acapulco Sin Censura, which translates to Reports to Acapulco Without Censorship. Now, this page allowed citizens to report crimes, violence, corruption, and abuse of power by the authorities. The banner claimed that Montenegro was one of the administrators of this page. After her murder, the state attorney general of Guerrero, Javier Olea, confirmed that Montenegro indeed managed the Facebook page, which had its last posts in October 2017. So, did they ever catch the killers? August 28, 2018, local media in Acapulco reported that a suspect in Montenegro's murder had been arrested in a hotel along the city's coastal boulevard. Now, this suspect was known as El Rusito, or the Little Russian, and had been involved in various violent crimes in the city. However, the charges against him were later dropped due to an alleged lack of sufficient evidence. In 2020, the case resurfaced when prosecutors announced the arrest of Edgar Saul, also known as El Pipa, who was second in command at the independent cartel of Acapulco. He was charged with Montenegro's murder. In the end, Leslie's legacy and all those souls who were lost for the sake of truth will forever serve as a constant reminder of the importance of free and fearless press.